my mic and this is my workout and this well this is the bench hook that i use in all my videos it is yeah i'm allowed to wear on youtube but let's just say it's past its best it's an example of what i like to call the woodworker's theory of relativity which means that if you make something like i did here to use really quickly or if you can't find the one you have you're going to use that for years and i have i have a much better one of these i have no idea where it's gone and i can tell you for a fact if i had made a much better one of these out of fine materials using fine joinery i would have used this thing once any woodworkers out there you know you spend that time making that perfect jig you think you'll use every single day twice once because you needed to and once because you felt bad about how much time you put into making it i see you so it is definitely time for an upgrade on this baby so that's what i'm going to do in this week's video but first into the bin I'm going to open up. I'll take that later. I'll use it for cutting metal and stuff. It's still useful. If you don't own one, I highly recommend you make one. They are so handy in the workshop. Almost every cut I make that's not on a job saw is on one of those. They're beautiful. I'll show you how they work and give you a few tips and tricks along the way. This is going to be part of a series of videos that I'm going to do called Shop Jobs, where I go to things like this, jigs and storage and bits and bobs to do with tools, tool maintenance and generally making your work more efficient. I think it's as important to know these things about making your work more productive and basically more enjoyable because you're cutting out the stuff that makes it not fun. I have yet to come up with a genie that sands everything for you but if i do trust me that will be one of these videos so let's get straight into it shall we so a bench hook as the name suggests hooks on your bench and the basic principle here is uh, you hold your material against the fence at the top or the fence can be in the middle and using that fence and the side of that fence you should theoretically be able to cut a square cut now in this case I made it quickly and I used softwood so that has really worn out that fence to the top over the years and as you can see there there's quite a lot of light so it's time to upgrade that replace those fences with some nice hardwood pieces that won't wear away as quickly and replace the very scarred top with some new material and I'm going to make this reversible as well. So. For this I have chosen some nice dense marine ply for my base and some teak to make the fences. So I'll go into more detail in a while when I start working on it. But the general principle is that I want to set it up so that either way I turn this bench hook I'll have a square edge I can work off which would theoretically double the life of the bench hook. So I'm just annotating here for myself and for you to show you the two basic parts that you need which is a plywood base and then your hardwood stops the idea behind behind pardon me using plywood is that it's a lot less hard on saws than the mdfs would be and obviously if you use hardwood which is perfectly acceptable uh, it can be a little bit less dimensionally stable and also you know, you're, you're cutting up a piece of hardwood that you could use for something else make more money off so step one is to dimension my stops now this is the most vital step and you know it's the one i take the most time on making sure that that's square and straight in all faces means that i have a bit of a tolerance for error so if i put it on slightly askew or the mdf or sorry not mdf ply that i use for the base is slightly off it doesn't really matter because everything is based off of this stop so yeah I take a little while here and get it all nice and square before proceeding to making my initial cut to make sure it's square and then duplicating that for the other side Now 
Knife lines are always more accurate than pencil lines. So, as is entirely vital to the success of this project that this is square, I'm making sure to mark all my edges with my marking knife and then very slowly and carefully cut it using my fine Japanese saw. So even though the old bench hook is no longer square, it's still perfect for making this square cut. So if you've seen my videos before, you've seen me do this, just using a chisel and cutting into the knife line to give myself a shoulder to put my saw into. That'll allow me then to slowly work down that front line, making sure that I get this absolutely perfectly square. And once I have a cut then, I do go over it with my plane just to make sure it's perfectly square but unfortunately I forgot to record that but just off this cut that's perfectly square we're set up and I duplicate that then for the other side so I can use both ends So on the non-fence side, shall we say, it's not vital that it's perfectly square. So I just mark it with a pencil and cut it. But I'm very careful to put a mark on it to let me know which is the side I've went to all this effort of squaring up. So when I flip this over, you can see the problem. On this end, it's really only designed to hook on the bench. So I want to set it up that I have a fence on both sides. So I can just simply flip it over and get twice as much use out of my bench hook. And now that everything is nice and square and ready to go, it's time to assemble this. So again, being very, very careful to have that square edge pointing to where I need it to be. I'm just going to glue these in place. First thing I do, again, just mark up so I can see it. And then I glue it in and temporarily I fix it with screws. Uh, this is just an expediency thing. And then when the glue has set, I'll draw those screws out and replace it with dowels. This then will allow me to cut without having fear of ruining the beautiful teeth on my saw by hitting a piece of metal. So once I have it all glued in, the glue cleaned up, baby wipes are the best thing for removing glue. They're just incredible. That's my tip of the day. Actually, that's going to be my tip for Tips and Tricks Thursday next week, so that'll save you having to do it. But basically, anywhere where my hand touches it, I don't want this to be sharp. And particularly the back edge, because if you watch as I use this, I'm using my fingers to hold it along that back edge. So I just knock off all the edges using my block plane and a good tip if you're doing this to avoid breakout on the end is to chamfer your sides first and then cut the end grain that'll stop the breakout because if you start at the end grain you could blow out the back so you can see here again i'm just profiling the back edge to a nice curve so that when i grab it when i'm cutting i can apply a lot of pressure and i want to dig into my hand i just do that for both sides and just when I'm knocking off the corners here with the chisel, I don't do the side that's my square fence because I don't want any shadows that might throw off my eye and make it look like it wasn't square when I'd be cutting square. Once everything is dry, I just remove all the glue. This is vital because for this to work, the piece of timber has to sit tight to that fence for it to be perfectly square and then i removed the old screws and replaced them just with normal eight mil dowels uh, this has obviously the advantage that i previously mentioned of you know me not having a risk of hitting metal and destroying my saw but also it means that in the future if i wanted to 
reuse these on the next bench hook I make. I can just cut straight through the base and then just glue them on, square them up, glue them on to the next one and keep reusing and recycling. This is pretty simple, that's why it's all in. Super speed. And then once I have that done, I give it a little sand and completely unnecessary Danish oil because it's me and I have a problem. Now it's testing time. So let's see if all this effort is worth it. If without setting and marking, using that as a guide, I can get a perfectly square cut. I mean, I already know the answer because I've done it. But are you wondering? Yeah, I wouldn't have put a fail up here. It's pretty much all bang on. So I'm very, very, very happy. Yeah, I mean, it's a short video, very simple little project, but I think it's well worth anyone's time doing this. Uh, particularly if you're a hand tool worker, it is vital that you have one of these and that you set up perfectly. It's a simple little project, but it's well worth upgrading this broken down, crappy one into this much nicer, considerably sexy one. And because I have a hardwood stop, I have a hardwood edge to reference my saw against, which means that that's going to stay square, it's going to stay true for a longer period of time. And then all I have to do if I wear it away a bit, make another square cut and square it up. Or, because I've designed it this way, use the back side. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you make one. They're just so handy. And if you do, yeah. Show me how much fancier you can get. I like this one. This is going in all my videos now. Gucci Gucci Goo. Thank you for staying all the way at the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you tune in next week when I have a really cool build video coming up using this undoubtedly and definitely the square that I cleaned up last week. In the last week's video, if you haven't seen, check it out now. It's really fun. I had a load of old tools given to me by my neighbour and I brought them all back to life. I particularly love this one. Oh, and of course I'll be using all this lovely hardwood. Have any of you been wondering if I work in hardwood or it's just deal and stuff I find out the side of the street? Well I do! If you want to see how this turns out, tune in next week. And I post every day on Instagram so you can see little bits of how this project is going on. It's Instagram at Okumi Designs. So yeah, have fun. Absolutely do try this at home. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Can't believe I just treated a bench up like a baby. Probably should see see the right out of that. Subscribe!